About two weeks ago, I discussed the performance of my solar panels for the whole year. Now we're at the start of December, I want to discuss the performance in detail for the months of October and November, as well as Storm Arwen and what it meant for me, and also reasons why I wrote in to my Minister for Scottish Parliament. So if you haven't seen my previous videos, hello, I'm Anthony. I live here in Aberdeenshire and I commissioned a nine kilowatt solar panel array uh, to be installed on my bungalow last year. That solar panel array consists of 28 solar panels and each solar panel uh, has got a solar edge optimizer. And each of those solar panels is wired in to a single eight kilowatt solar edge inverter. Now that inverter will take surplus solar power from my panels and it will divert it into a hot water controller. And there is also a uh, My Energy Zappi charger, which I use to take so surplus solar panel and use to charge up my Tesla. Now the production figures for October and November were almost identical to those for February and January. In October, for example, we generated 321 kilowatt hours of electricity from the rooftop. Whereas in February, we generated about 330 kilowatt hours of electricity. And in November, we generated 140 kilowatt hours of electricity compared to 131 kilowatt hours in January. So overall, there was nothing too surprising about that. So for October, 49% of my electricity consumption came from my solar panel. That's quite a lot lower than what we had in February, where it was closer to about 60%. The reason for that, of course, is that I've now got an electric car added to my electrical portfolio. But nonetheless, there's still a fair quantity of electricity being exported to the grid. About 129 kilowatt hours was exported. Now, the best day was the 4th of October. Here, we generated 27 kilowatt hours of electricity. Compare that to the best day in September. Here we generated 34 kilowatt hours. So it's not that much lower. It does show that October days can be quite productive. You compare that to the worst day of production. On the 29th of October, we generated just over 1.4 kilowatt hours of electricity. Not very much. Now in November, we had even greater contrasts. Less than 26% of the electricity that I consumed came from my rooftop. And that, of course, is down to my Tesla again. But even so, we still generated enough electricity for export when I was away from home again. So we exported 52 kilowatt hours. Now the best day was the 9th of November where we generated just under 11 kilowatt hours of electricity. But by contrast, the worst day of all was the 27th of November. And on that day, we generated no electricity at all. That poor performance was due to one exceptional event. I am, of course, talking about Storm Arwen. And I want to talk about the good things and the bad things in relation to solar panels in, uh, when it comes to severe and damaging storms, as well as talking about resilience as a whole. 26th of November, and we've had one of the first uh, major storms for quite a number of years. Um, the last time we had a big storm was in 2014. But this time the power has gone out for over three hours and that's the longest time I've been without power uh, living in my house for the last uh, 12 years. This particular situation was one of the major reasons why I purchased this wood-burning stove. Without power, you can't run your gas central heating or your oil central heating. You need, whilst you're burning uh, gas or oil, um, you need electricity to run the pumps for your hot water. You need electricity to open the gas burner solenoid valve, and you need electricity to uh, run your air intake fan. And you don't have that. So what you need is redundancy. And this is a perfect alternative means of keeping your house warm. 
Wind speeds outside are gusting 65 miles an hour. Um, this house is shielded uh, somewhat by the trees. Um, outside the village, I just went for a walk at night time. It's very, very blowy. Um, but the key thing is, is that the temperature is just above freezing point. And yet, here I am, I'm uh, in uh, short sleeves and uh, I'm, I'm very comfortable. But this is also an illustration of uh, another feature. Having a battery as a backup would mean I could still enjoy most of the modern conveniences of life. Um, I've got no phone reception, um, so the local uh, transmitter mast depends on electricity just as much as my uh, house does. Uh, but this, is, this goes to show why having um, some planning for uh, redundancy is really important. Um, as it happens, this isn't a backup means of heating. This tends to be my primary means of heating uh, throughout the whole uh, uh, winter time. I only tend to use the gas burner for um, bringing my house up to temperature. But once it's up to temperature, this thing uh, keeps it at that temperature. So here I am the day after the storm. Now this house is protected from wind directions by the trees uh, from wind directions coming from the southwest uh, right through to the north. So whilst my solar panels have done just fine, the fact of the matter is, is that there's no grid supply to my house. And that's a problem. Whenever there's no voltage on the grid supply, the inverter inside will shut down. It does that for one good reason, and that's safety. If it uh, was able to supply uh, power to my home distribution system, it's also supplying uh, power to the rest of my street. So this is a system which all inverters have, and to get past that system, you need to have battery backup or you need to have a system which is dedicated to off-grid use. So, a couple of uh, casualties overnight. I heard uh, at least one of these trees uh, uh, falling over when I was uh, preparing my food in the kitchen. So I had a moment of uh, dread, wondering whether it was gonna be the big uh, larch tree uh, falling onto my house, but uh, thankfully not. So here you can see the uh, power cables and where they've actually come down uh, this is a, a line of trees uh, which acts as a windbreak and uh, the, uh, it's just taken down a 33 kilovolt uh, power line. It's one of the circuits feeding the village, it's not the only one. But if there's a problem here, no doubt there are problems elsewhere as well. So that blackout lasted 43 hours for my house. At the time of filming this, six days later, there are still other properties in Aberdeenshire which aren't reconnected. So if you're a business, your income is at stake here. Certain businesses will have backup generators to ensure they can still operate in such situations. But it's worth considering that batteries, not just in terms of saving energy every day on your electricity bill, but you also need to think of batteries in terms of safeguarding your income. Many people, myself included, are working from home. If you suffer a blackout and you can't get to an office, that's your income in peril. Therefore, the value of a battery can be measured in terms of lost income avoided instead of just simply electricity being saved. And you don't need too many days of blackout conditions over the life of the battery to favour such an investment decision. Now at the end of September, I wrote to my MSP. In Scotland, you can go to almost any residential street and you will find at least one house which has got solar panels on their roof. However, if you go to any business or industrial park in Scotland, you're likely to have great difficulty identifying a property which actually has rooftop solar power. Now I've asked some businesses why they don't have rooftop solar power. One example of a reply was that they don't consider the returns on investment to be worth their while. In that particular instance, this particular business only considered investment decisions if the returns could be realized in less than three years. So given that solar panels have got a 10 to 14 year return on investment, they're not going to consider that, even though the asset lifetime is 25 years or even more. 
Now, businesses have got all sorts of short-term barriers to overcome before making long-term investment decisions, such as ones which are realized in 10 to 15 years. But there's one substantial barrier which is made entirely by the government. I'm talking about business rates. Now, a short introduction to business rates. This is a property tax which is levied on all non-domestic properties, typically business and industrial properties. It's got nothing to do with taxes on corporate profits. The policy of setting rates is devolved to the Scottish Government and that rate varies between 49% and 51% of the annual rateable value of that particular property. That valuation is not based on the actual market rate paid by that business on the uh, lease for that property. Instead, the value is deemed by the Scottish Assessors Association. Now they do take account of general market rates, but then they make attack, uh, adjustments to the value based on the features of that property. And we're talking about things such as location, the size of the building, the size of the parking spaces, and also the uh, makeup of the fabric of the building. In general terms, plant and machinery that goes inside a property has no influence on the rateable value of that property. But attachments to the property, such as solar panels, are rateable. Now, official guidance on how to value property features are documented in what are known as practice notes. So solar panels are covered by practice note number three, which you can find on the Scottish Assessors Association website. We can have a look here. And if you look for uh, under the letter P, you'll find photovoltaic and electricity generators. Have a look here and you have practice note number three. In summary, when it comes to self-consumption as opposed to export, the rateable value is much more expensive. The formula I've seen for rateable values can be found on the Solar UK website. So if we digest this formula right here, you can see that the rateable value is equal to the capital income multiplied by the depreciation rate. Now, the capital income is assumed, it's not actual. And as you can see, for solar arrays less than four kilowatts, we've got a capital income of 1,400 pounds per kilowatt. Compared to my own system at home, that was 1,200 pounds per kilowatt. So the assumed values are much higher than the actual cost. But when you then apply a 50% business rate tax on that rateable value, you end up with an additional 50% burden on top of your original capital costs, uh, which you have to cover um, with the electricity income that you generate from those solar panels. All of a sudden, that 10 to 15 year return on investment in a domestic setting becomes a 15 to 22 year in return on investment in a business or industrial setting. Considering the asset life for a solar panel array is 25 years, that takes away any profit potential from investing in that solar panel system. So why would any business invest in solar capital given those circumstances? Now, there is some good news for English businesses. As part of the October 2021 budget, there was a review into business rates which was published. And it turns out that if you go onto page four of the business rates review, it turns out that investments into green plant and energy performance will be exempt from business rates. That's really good news for English uh, uh, businesses. But business rates are a devolved matter in Scotland. And so far, there has been no announcement by the Scottish Government that will exempt green investments from business rates entirely. So last September, I wrote to my MSP. Anyone can write to their local MSP and they are your elected representative in Scottish Parliament. My MSP is Alexander Burnett. He's a Conservative, but he will represent your views to Parliament regardless of your political persuasions. 
I've written to my MSP on previous occasions, but on this occasion, I was invited to a Zoom meeting with him. I think the conversation went very well, and he certainly seemed to resonate with my suggestion that business rates should be exempt. However, he gave me some homework. He suggested that I should write some very precise and short questions which he could put to the Scottish Government. So this is something I've recently done, and I do hope something good will come out of this. So overall, I do hope that businesses do find some economic reason to invest not only in renewable power, but also energy storage. The recent experiences of Storm Arwen go to demonstrate that it's not only savings in ever rising electricity costs which are at stake here, but it's also a matter of ensuring that businesses have continuity in terms of continuing to operate in the face of extreme weather. Now I've had two requests, one to talk about my Inru solar panel system and the other one to talk about my cryptocurrency mining uh, setup and experiences. Now I think uh, you'll agree um, I've run out of time in this video to discuss those things. They are on my uh, to-do list to discuss in a later video. So very soon I'm going to have a video coming up about my Tesla Model 3 and driving it in the winter time with winter tyres. I'm also going to document how we change the wheels on the Tesla onto those uh, winter rims. In the meantime, I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll talk to you again very soon.